Hi guys, Ravensong here. Make sure we're in focus and hopefully I'm not dealing with swine cam as uh, Rebecca would refer to it. Anyways, got a new deck in. I wanted to do a quick first impressions again. Um, this is one that I picked up. I think I saw it on The trees west of here, I think I saw it on her Instagram. Not positive. Anyways, it really intrigued me because it was this surrealistic um, impressionistic um, artwork. Um, looks like it could be acrylic paints. Um, I doubt it's oil. Um, actually, I know it's not oil. But it kind of gives that acrylic paint look to it. Anyways, I also know that it is not a real painting. There is an artist involved who I think he does um, technological art where it's done on technological technology. We'll put it that way, electronic technology. And he used AI. Um, trying to remember what it exactly said. Um, the artist statement. Um, let's see where it says here. Experiment with synthrography, which is soon. Rem I was soon reminded of Marshall Lugans, McLuggins assertion that the medium is the message. Sus suggests the characters of medium of the medium inherited shape. Um, da, 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 da. And the medium communicates not only through the aesthetics it produces, but also through the novel forms of engagement and necessitated. Um, hey, quiet guys. During this experiment, world trigger a neutral pole, blah, blah, blah. Um, hmm, I'm not finding where it said it. But he used, I think he used computerized art, art techniques, um, and AI. But this was done in 2022, so AI was still pretty new. Um, it hasn't come to its full fruition at this, well, it has now, pretty much. But, um, anyways, and I could be totally wrong on that because um, AI could be around a lot longer than I thought. Because when I think about it, I have another deck from Marcus Katz that I believe is AI, and that came out a couple years ago. It's a pretty awesome deck. Anyways, I'm not, dis I'm not discounting... Um, AI technology as an art form because I think I think it can be used if used properly it can communicate an artist's needs as well as or maybe better than a paintbrush sometimes it's it's a controversy um, oh here it is this is where it was um, interview how do you do in do with computers. I've not done anything. I've been some of the computer po poetry. Um, does the fact that it comes from a machine diminish its value to you? I think in any artist product it must stand and fall on what's there. What's there now sits in front of you as a re result proves believe triumph. The word of Italian triumphi the name of tarot trumps, 15th century, indeed some Ill some illustration of the minor arcana, wands, cups, swords, pentacles, and some are some of the most alluring I've ever seen. Each rich drama prior to design, the artist Pamela Coleman Smith, uh, early 20th century, today the author rises to a new level of relevance and beauty. The interpretive tools range from world-spanning philosophy to modern self 
Help Occult Revelations, Kabbalah. Um, all right, I guess I'm not seeing it. There, there it is. In the same way, the, these authors boldly, painstakingly embrace digital and AI visual technologies, a method sometimes called synthography or prompt engineering. From there, they use cut up collage making extraordinary results as. Their efforts demonstrate technology does not destroy magic, but instead enhances it. It is AI. Um, I was under the impression when I first read this, and I don't, sometimes I just skim, is that it was a combination of what he'd done on you know, his own on the computer. But it, it is an AI deck. Um, that's what it comes down to. Um, but I'm not going to discount AI. Um, there are a few decks that have really stood out to me. And this is one of them. So, um, and they put a lot of effort into this, especially for the price I paid. It was very, very reasonable. I got it on Amazon for twenty-eight, um, and and it comes in a beautiful, well-built magnetic box, outer box, and then I have the inside tuck box too. And this lovely book with a nice, not quite a hardback cover, and it's one hundred and seventy-five pages. Um, you get not a full page illustration, but you get at least two full pages on each one, including the artwork. So that's not bad. I mean, I mean, I think that's very, very nice. Um, well organized. It goes into astrology, um, cherubic aspects. What else is there? Um, hidden spheres, four worlds, uh, tetragrammation. I'm not sure what that is. You've, you've got the Kabbalah in here too. I'm seeing that just from this. Let's see. Um, just from that, looking at the titles on that page. Brief overview of the symbols of the tree of life. So this really gets into Kabbalah and other things too. So I don't know the the artwork itself should the the artwork itself stood out so much to me that I really felt the need to uh, go ahead and add this one to my collection. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look because I think it is a beautiful, beautiful deck um, just from what I had seen from. Um, somebody else on Instagram. I kind of had to follow their their hashtags down a rabbit hole to find out who did this. And I was surprised that it has been out for a little while. Um, I don't know for sure, but it may have been a Kickstarter at first. Um, they've got their own website. Um, and several booksellers carry it, um, but I went ahead and went through Amazon just because it was it was less expensive and it was it was um, easy to get, quick. It was going to be quick. We'll put it that way, and no shipping. So, anyways, I think it's beautiful. I don't know what to say. It's a, it's an an art style. The AI generated art style on this, I should say, is absolutely gorgeous. And to me, it reflects an acrylic type painting, maybe with a little bit of watercolor to it. Anyway, so that's the fool, the magician. I'm not sure about the blacked out face, but it, it kind of adds to the reading a little bit, I think. Um, The cardstock is fabulous. It's really nice. I mean, like I said, they put a, they put good money into this. It is produced by RP Studios Hatchet Book Group. Um, Runningpress.com. Anyways, 
like I said, it's, it is reversible. Kind of reminds me of a kaleidoscope on the back. It's beautiful. High Priestess. It has a, you know, it does kind of have a feel for that Marcus Katz deck, too. Marcus Katz deck has a lot more going on in it. It's not as impressionistic. It's very detailed. But um, very, very similar in its feel. I think it's gorgeous. Um, bordered. I think the borders are fine. No. I wouldn't want to color these because it's a white border and I always end up with a little bit on the front. Even if it's very minute, it'll show up and it, I don't care for that on white. If, if it had a darker border, then I'd be more apt to pick a color that went with it. It's getting ready to rain. Here it comes. The Hierophant. I think it, this follows the typical Waite Smith and um, like I said, Tree of Life um, way of reading with the Major Arcana. That's pretty cool, kind of a winged machine there. I'm hoping you can see this. My lighting is not great. Right now, because the clouds rolled in. Strength. The Hermit. That one feels a little bit different in the artwork, but not too bad. Wheel of Fortune feels a little collagey, but it, you know, it gets. The point comes across in the images. Justice. The Hanged Man. Looks like it's him hanging down here. It feels like flowers, but then again, it also kind of feels like it's a balloon lifting him up. Um, like I said, it's hard to see, but you get the idea. Um, my lighting sucks right now. You almost can't tell. I mean, it looks like a human, human, human figure, but you can't tell if its limbs are tree, the tree of Yudrasil, or if it's part of his body. It's like one and the same. It's kind of cool. Interesting. Interesting. Death. Temperance. I'm not sure it caught the balance of elements in here. The, the pouring back and forth. Um, but you still get the general impression of a temperance card. The devil. <laughs> I get the feeling from this is sometimes you have partners in your demise, so to speak. <laughs> I get that feeling because of the way they're holding hands. Or maybe it takes two to break free, depending on how you want to read that. Tower. The star, that's beautiful. The moon. The sun. Judgment. The world. It's got all the animals around the, the outside representing each element. Ace of Wands. Two of Wands. I think the images are gorgeous. I think it's beautiful. I think it's quite beautiful. I thought it was very interesting to listen to Kelly Fitzgerald when she built her AI deck and what she discovered playing with the AI universe. Um, it was quite fascinating to learn from. You should watch her videos. They're, they're, they're fantastic on that. I didn't buy her deck because I felt like 
after watching the creation videos, the deck itself got tweaked more than I would have liked to have seen from her original depictions that she came up with. Um, in the process, they tweaked quite a few things, and I felt like it went in a direction I just, I did, I, it, it lost some of its appeal to me. I mean, I still am fascinated with what she taught with those first videos. Um, and it really opens up, I think, a, a new doorway to knowledge or to seeing things. Um, like I said, I, I, jury's out on the AI thing. There's a lot of things. It's possibilities of going bad really, really bother me. But I can't help but find an appeal in the good things that it does generate. And this would be one of them. I think it's gorgeous. I like the fact that it is done in a, it may be an AI, but it's done in a type of medium, um, art medium. And maybe that's what he was talking about in the book there about how it's made or what it's made of. The, the medium that it's made out of makes a difference. And, his, and, and this one is obviously like an acrylic medium. AI generated. <laughs> um, but I think it flows beautifully. I just, I don't know. I'm quite pleased with it. Quite pleased with it. The images are big enough. It would be neat if they were bigger, but if they're big enough to see. That was the other thing, is the other AI deck I have um, I got off of Etsy. The images are so small, and it's kind of like the original Arthur Rackham ducks. They're they're so small and dark. It's hard to get the detail out of them, which is kind of sad. Kind of sad, but this one seems to be big enough. I like this a lot. This is just gorgeous. I feel like. It was painted with a knife, you know, not a lot of brush strokes. I mean, the cups are obviously more finely detailed and put in the, 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 the elemental objects. A little bit more finesse was put in to make them realistic looking for the most part, especially the multi-groups. Um, but the rest of it is very surrealistic or uh, impressionistic. I'm okay. I, I think it's gorgeous. I like that. Like I said, it almost feels like it's painted with a with a palette knife. That one looks like it's got a little rub on it. Like it may have gone through the rollers improperly when it was cut. Left marks. Ace of Swords. This duality here on this Three of Swords. positions on the swords of that kind of goes back to um, Marseille. Eight of swords. Nine of swords. That one, those ones are more weight smith. Ten of swords. Hmm. That's kind 
kind of grotesque. There's no detail, but it's kind of grotesque. That one makes it feel like they're traveling for refuge. They're looking for a place to go. I like that feeling on that one. It's not so down and out. There's a feeling of hope in it. Gorgeous. I love it. I feel like I could look at this image forever. The thing is, if you get, you start fixating on something and it loses its cohesion sometimes. You almost have to stand back and, and remind yourself to step back or to, to lose focus on it in order to see what's actually going on. There's no glare. They're a matte finish. It's a matte finish, or mostly matte finish. And King of Pentacles. I think it's a stunning, stunning deck. I am quite pleased with it. Um, it's definitely a personal preference. If you're not into AI, it, it definitely will probably not go up your alley, but. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I think it's it has its uses and it's it has its its attractiveness to it. And I like it. I like this deck. I think I can I can read with this. Um, we'll have to do a little play with it and see what see how it goes. In fact, let me go ahead and let's do a shuffle. They're, they're fairly big cards. These are definitely not little, but my hand does reach. Ooh, the shuffle's not bad. Um, leaves a little bit of a bend. But you know what? A lot of the decks right now seem to be doing that. I think people are, or artists or creators are kind of venturing away from that heavier stock. And... Um, And I think that helps with with the shuffle ability, but it definitely affects the shape of your cards when you start to shuffle. Okay. That's interesting. The first shuffle was really nice and the rest of these are the shuffles have not been so smooth. I find that interesting. Um, it's gotta have to do with the card stock. That's okay. I can work with it. It might be a little cardboardy. I don't know if this is what they what people refer to when they say decks can feel a little cardboardy. But I'm okay with it. I think it's, I think it's a gorgeous deck. I'm not the greatest shuffler, so. Alrighty, let's see what it has to say. Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords. <laughs> Obviously my shuffle was not that great. And Queen of Pentacles. So, we got command of thoughts and ideas, you know, being ruthless, attacking the problem head on, making sure you, you take action, 
and Queen of Pentacles. Um, put your money where your mouth is and be willing to back it up. Or it's for the benefit of the home, of, of what you want to achieve. Interesting, interesting. What's the negative on these? Let's see. The, neg the, the negative side or the challenge for each of these, past, present, and future. We've got the challenge for the Queen of Swords is Two of Cups, the partnership, the working together, wanting to take control. Um, Knight of Pentacles. Um, taking action takes money. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, she's the one that controls it. Her challenge is her own um, inability to take action or fears or um, like it's being barred. It's She's not being allowed to move forward. Could be a good thing for me, hard telling. Anyways, so that's interesting. Interesting little read there for, for the first time. Um, let's see what the card underneath says. Knight of Cups. This is, I always refer to the card at the bottom as the unasked question. So, didn't ask about this. Knight of Cups. Um, matters of the heart. Following your heart. Moving forward with love. It's probably the more important thing to focus on in that whole scenario. So, anyways, that is, I, you know, I never did give you the title of this, did I? <laughs> the Artist Decoded Tarot. It's interesting, and I think the book is going to be an interesting little read, especially the stuff about the artist and the writer at the beginning. The artist is Yoshino. And I think the writer is Jennifer Sodini, right? No, the artist is Sodini. And Yoshino is the writer, right? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm having drawing a blank here. Artist statement, and that's Yoshino. He's the artist, and she is the creator. So that's right, because the artist came up with the idea. If I remember re reading this correctly, the artist came up with the idea that he was exploring the art of tarot itself, and he called his friend Jennifer Sodini to help him out with the rest, and they collaborated together. I don't know if the difference was that she was, she's more into divination or not. It didn't really say what um, her influence was or what, what prompted him to contact her, but he did. And, um, and it might say more in depth in the reading part of it, and I just hadn't gotten that far. Like I said, I skim a lot, so it's just kind of my way of doing things. So it's called The Artist Decoded. It is an AI deck. Jennifer Sodini and Yoshino are the two creators on this. It is RP Studios, Hatchet Book Group. Um, I think it's stunning. I think it's an absolutely beautiful deck. Comes in that nice box. You get your 78 travel box, 78 cards and travel box, 190 page, two page book and a keepsake storage box which is the large magnetic box um, I think it's beautiful I don't know if I'd use it more than I do um, Marcus Katz deck because his has a lot more detail in it and it really draws you in even more so than this one this one like I said you kind of have to remember to step back because it's so impressionistic that you think you might see one thing and then you start looking closer and it looks totally different or it can be interpreted deadly different. Anyways, beautiful deck. Um, thank you for watching, and give me a thumbs up. 
and I will see you on the tube. Bye.